magic mirror on the wall, who's the most racist, sexist, dwarfist of them all? Here is everything wrong with Snow White, and how Disney finally makes it right. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs opens in Technicolor. It's technically in colour, but the only colour is white. The book, white. The castle, white. The horse, white. Who's this? Of course, Snow White. She feeds white doves, flutters her eyelashes at a white prince, and even scares the dwarfs as a white ghost. Walt Disney is Walter White. He has the colours of the rainbow at his fingertips, the world of Technicolor in the palm of his hand. But this production is not black and white, or even Technicolor. It's white, white, and more white. Finding representation in Snow White is like finding Nemo in a deep fat fryer. A black spider, a black crow, black vultures. Well, at least they're wearing red lipstick. How about the Queen? In front of the mirror, her beauty, her whiteness, is second only to Snow White's. When she dons an evil disguise to poison the princess, what colour does she choose? Pink, purple, polka dots. In the world of Walt Disney, white was right, black was wrong, and only men were strong. When we came to reimagining the actual role of Snow White, it became about the fairest of them all, meaning who is the most just. A list of animators with more sausage in it than Oktoberfest at the boiler. Women are nowhere to be seen behind the screen. In the prologue, the protagonist is a prettygonist. A lovely little princess and her wicked stepmother forces her to dress in rags as a scullery maid. Men wear what men want. Women wear what men want to. The magic mirror, a magic white man judging the beauty of women. A lovely maid I see, she is more fair than the skin white as snow. The mirror is not magic, it is misogynist and reflective of the patriarchy. When Snow White is not under the magic male gaze, she is at the wishing well. What is her dream? To lead an army into battle, to smash the patriarchal mirror, to redeem the queen. to marry a handsome prince. When he rides his white stallion into town, does she make the first move, get his number? No, she skedaddles like a shy teeny bopper at a BTS concert. In this kingdom, men make the move, women make dinner and babies. What is the queen's reaction? Take her far into the forest, where she can pick wildflowers. She has taken this rather well. There. Kill her. But your majesty! Oh. In the world of Snow White, a huntsman, a man, is inherently good, but is forced into evil by a wicked woman and her heart-shaped box. The princess, like all young women, loves nothing more than a day out picking flowers and singing melodies. When she soothes a little bird, the animators can't even be bothered to move her lips. Oh, please don't cry. The Huntsman, despite being christened the Huntsman and spending his whole life hunting, can't go through with the hunting. Why not? She's mad, jealous of you. She'll stop at nothing. It's all a woman's fault. Behind every man doing an evil act is an evil woman pulling the strings. Snow White is so mortified, her eyes light up like a Starfield NPC. In the woods, Snow White wakes up to her true enemy. The Patriarchy. Out of the darkness and into the light is Snow White ready to fight. And I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Is it time to go full gladiator mode on the evil queen? We must No, it is yet another song. I'm awfully sorry. I'm so ashamed of the fuss I've made. And an apology for making a fuss. If only Maximus had woken up, gone full Les Miserables, and said sorry to Commodus. <laughs> can this get any more sexist? Yes it can, for even in animated nature, it is the mother who has to stay home and take care of the kids. The cute little animals lead Snow White to a place to sleep, 
and she waltzes along like she's the white swan at the Bolshoi Theatre. In 1937, women were not allowed to walk, they had to dance to the tune of the patriarchy. Upon seeing the little house, she's over the moon. Oh, it's adorable! Just like a doll's house! Snow White is a fully grown woman, and she talks like an eight-year-old girl on a bus ride to Disney World. Inside, it is a house of horrors, dark, dingy, full of cobwebs, clearly lacking a woman's touch. As is customary, Snow White floats in with the whole animal kingdom behind her. When she sees a little chair, she thinks of little children to take care of. What a cute little chair! Must be seven little children! Women have child-rearing on the brain. They are just aching at the loins to make babies. What was that? In 1937, it wasn't just builders making wolf whistles, but little birds trying to get their little rocks off. What a pile of dirty dishes! You'd think their mother would... <gasps> mother, what about their father, Snow White? Doesn't he have to do any housework? Maybe they have no mother. Then they're orphans. Of course, the only possible conclusion. More likely both parents are dead than a man is caught cleaning the house. I know. We'll clean the house and surprise them. Snow White grew up in a world of privilege, but a world of privilege only for males. She does not hesitate to clean up after men, be them little or large. As she tidies up, the dwarfs are doing real work digging for diamonds, a perfect snapshot of life before the 21st century. Men were out free to make riches, women inside prisoners to doing dishes. To rub it in fervour, the dwarfs sing about their hard day's work on the way home. Hi-ho, hi-ho, home from work we go. Women don't sing about work, they sing about... When it's time for bed, Snow White sounds like a little princess, as in a princess toddler. I'm a little sleepy myself. The animals, so welcoming of a woman, are gone like a shot as soon as they hear the dwarfs singing about hoes. The little men are shocked to find their little abode cleaned from top to bottom. Is it a ghost? A demon, a dragon, worse, it's a woman. Here it comes! Ah! Oh, Who is sent to unmask the monster upstairs? Dopey, the world's smallest idiot, who just so happens to have eyes like a girl. What is it? Why, it, it, it's a girl! She's mighty pretty. She's beautiful, just like a angel. Inside the big castle walls, or in a little bed in a little house, Snow White is served sexism extra large. The discriminatory dwarfs immediately judge her beauty. The misogynist mirror has competition. She's a female, and all females is poison. They're full of wicked wiles. Grumpy moves the dwarfs into pole prejudice position with some of the most misogynistic words ever uttered. Women cannot win. Their beauty either makes them angels or targets her miserable dwarf incels. Awake, the princess is showered with sexist scorn. What are you and who are you doing? The dwarfs are even worse about the queen. Queen! She's witch! She's bad! She's mighty bean! She's an old witch! Grumpy wants her gone, but she has an offer no man can refuse. You let me stay? I'll keep house for you. A wash and so and sweet and cook. The dwarfs react like they've won the princess Powerball. A pretty princess is now under the male thumb, prisoner to the kitchen, contained to cleaning. Snow White becomes their mom and asks them to wash. Six of the seven dwarfs are good little boys. One of them is a little bigot. <laughs> Women. He warns the others. But I'm warning you. Just give them an inch. Snow White's only crime is asking men to wash their hands. It is met with masculine rage and fury. Most of the dwarfs are willing to wash for a beautiful woman. 
If she looked like Susan Boyle, she'd have been sent to the swamp to live with Shrek. The magic mirror spills the beans. The princess isn't dead. The heart-shaped box contains... The heart of a pig. Another example of the contempt men hold women. The huntsman could have chosen any heart to trick the queen. A beautiful songbird, a cute little rabbit. But no, he chooses a pig. For in his world, women and pigs are equal. The queen transforms to trick Snow White. She sheds her beauty to take on the form of real villainy. The most heinous appearance imaginable. The facade of an ugly old woman. By far the most monstrous possible disguise in a Walt Disney picture. Meanwhile, the dwarf house looks like Playboy Mansion. Endless partying now that they have a housewife. Each of the dwarfs share their party tricks. What does the princess have up her sleeve? Can she solve a Rubik's Cube in three seconds? Recite pi to 200 decimals? Well, once there was a princess and she fell in love. A story about a prince and a song. Someday, my prince will come. About a prince. The princess has one note and it's written by men. At bedtime, she says Jesus, her prayers. Please. World peace. A college education. Please make Grumpy like me. No, she asks for Grumpy to like her because the one thing women want, the adoration of men. His response? <laughs> women. An ejaculation of toxic masculinity. The queen concocts her dastardly plan. Put the princess to sleep, but there is an antidote. She can be revived. Only by love. <laughs> ah, the one power the queen is powerless to stop. A kiss from a handsome man. No fret, for the dwarfs will. She's dead. She'll be buried alive. <laughs> In Disney animation, kings are valiant saviors. Queens, the personification of evil. <laughs> How about a kiss from the princess? Disgusting. The dwarfs warn her to be careful. Now I'm warning you, don't let nobody or nothing in the house. But a woman without a man around is a sitting duck. The harmless old peddler. Soups in for the kill while Snow White belts out another rendition of My Lovely Prince. My dream. All alone, my pet. Pet. A common term used for women, because women were the pets of men, even little ones. With the coast clear of men, the princess needs little persuasion. It's apple pie that make the men folk's mouths water. Not woman folk, not they folk, but men folk. For all other folk in Snow White can f*** off. She flushes away the chance to make men's mouths water, but gushes at the mere thought of being carried away by the dashing young prince. He will carry me away to his castle, where we will live happily ever after. <laughs> she sleeps eternally, and the queen celebrates victory. But not for long. The seven dwarfs run the monarch of a mountain into a lightning strike, and ultimately off a cliff to be picked apart by vultures. In the world of Disney, kings live forever. Queens are burned at the stake. What of Snow White, the so-called protagonist, lying in wait, waiting for a man to lock lips. Despite believing her to be a corpse, the dwarfs put her on display like a piece of jewelry. The prince catches wind of the dead woman in the glass coffin. His response? I must kiss this woman, rigor mortis, rigor be downed. I must rigor my jiggy. The dwarfs let him in like little pimps. The princess is powerless, unable to consent to a kiss that saves her life. Prince Bundy pecks her on the lips, and Snow White springs to life like morning glory. Finally, her destiny is fulfilled, and she's carried away like a piece of furniture from Ikea. She waves goodbye to her best friends to live happily ever after with a prince who doesn't even know her name. The Disney castle is born, a place where strong, independent women go to die. He's not 
she's going to be safe with the prince and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. The Seven Dwarfs, seven little examples of massive discrimination. Snow White floats like a butterfly, the prince prances like a peacock, the dwarfs work like slaves. They toil away, work all day, unearth untold treasures, but go home to a house smaller than a little house on the prairie. They have more diamonds than De Beers, yet their house hasn't been cleaned in years. What defines the dwarfs? Not their work, their wealth, but their worst character traits. Dopey, sneezy, grumpy, bashful, sleepy, names for dogs, not people. Why isn't Snow White called Snow Wet, the Prince, Prince Predator? The answer is simple. Little people get little respect. A woman as innocent and free of bigotry as the princess even mistakes them for children. What funny names for children! 1937 was the height of heightism. Knowing they will never measure up, the dwarfs master a variety of party tricks and try to trick the princess, but it is to no avail. The little heroes kill the queen and stand vigil by Snow White's sleeping side, yet in the end, size does matter. A prince rides in, kisses the sleeping beauty, and off she rides into the sunset. So long, garden gnomes, one tall prince adds up to far more than seven dwarfs. But you're still making that f backward story of that seven dwarves <laughs> living in a cave to get what the f are you doing, man? In 2024, Disney will finally make Snow White right. Gone with the wind, the racism, sexism, and dwarfism that has poisoned the minds and hearts of countless generations. The new Snow White will show the world that modern audiences have zero tolerance for intolerance. The princess will be a warrior to rival the woman king. The prince, barely a prince, and barely part of the story. The dwarfs, no longer dwarfs, for in the age of Peter Dinklage, only he can play the little parts. Thank you, Disney, for correcting history and making yet another remake that will tilt the world on its axis and send us hurtling towards a future in which animation is not abomination, but a revelation and a celebration of peace, justice, and equality. I was scared of the original cartoon. I think I watched it once and then I never picked it up again. Snow White.